What's up, Goldie here? And I'm going to be going over, we're going to try and go over uh, both the early and the main slate here and just kind of knock things out in in uh, one video here. Um, 11 total games, 6 on the early, 5 on the main. And that gives us a, a decent bit of baseball here on uh, Thursday, April 27. Um, so since we've got so many games, let's just kind of get right into it here on the early slate. Uh, we do have projections loaded for both slates so far, but uh, once again, disclaimers that the early numbers are quite noisy. And certainly on these, um, on these early slates like this, starting at uh, about noon Eastern today, um, some of the models just kind of take a little bit of time to wake up. So um, keep an eye out for pushes to the site for updates. Um, all right, so here on the on the early, we've got uh, we got Otani on the mound. He gets Oakland, and this is kind of why I say that the uh, the early ownership numbers are a little bit noisy because this ownership number looks quite low, um, even at 11-1. On on a full six gamer, there's generally no super shortage of um, of plays that we can get to that allow us to get to um, a, a very expensive arm like this. And today's really no exception. There's there's value floating around that we can find. Um, but admittedly, pricing is starting to get a little bit tighter with uh with our starting pitchers here we're not getting otani at 8k 9k and and spencer strider at, at 8k and 9k and things like that um anymore right so the top arms are are rising to the um top of the pricing spectrum as we kind of expect as we get into the season here and we get a bit more of um, a broad view of the identity of these teams and of these pitchers and their pitch mixes coming into the season, how they're performing, et cetera, et cetera. So um, nice to see that DK is pumping prices a little bit. And at least, you know, when we look at an $11,000 price tag for a, t a pitcher, we might have to make some decisions that could take us off a super expensive stack, notably uh, like in Atlanta uh, or something like that. If we want to, get to a full stack there it's probably going to be pretty difficult to make that happen with Shohei Otani unless you um, make some business decisions and get pretty cheap uh, elsewhere so um, that's the uh, that's the main takeaway from the early slate here uh, is that early ownership numbers on Shohei look quite low and I think this is a pretty exploitable spot um maybe he's got a huge huge projection here this is a big number so we want to be cognizant of that but um every metric is going to pop really hard this is oakland and they're terrible so uh shohei looks great and we're really not going to have much issue it's just line of construction and getting to the the good offenses that we want to get to um that's going to make it difficult to include him so just below him, we have uh, Urias. He's pulling a little bit more, naturally. $1,100, $1,100. And um, he gets Pittsburgh here. This might be a little bit of a sneaky, difficult spot for him. They're probably going to platoon a lot, which makes it okay. But he gives up a lot of power to the left side. Um, kind of a surprising amount. And I believe it's the even split adjusted. <clears throat> split adjusted. I believe it's the most... Uh, raw power two lefties on the slate and that's coming from a left-handed arm which is in a really good arm so kind of interesting there mitch keller gets the dodgers Ugh, really gross price tag here for keller uh, he's been fine in his first couple of starts but uh pretty bad matchup for sure um and then we kind of trickle down with some i would say standard pricing really the only only other one that really kind of jumps out at me uh, here in the early going is, is Kyle Wright down here at 6,600. Little, uh, a little out of the range um, that we 
would really expect to see for um, an, an arm of, of Wright's caliber getting Miami here. Uh, now, in the early going, he's been he's been picked apart a little bit a couple of different times. Um, he did make a, a debut. What he he was late. He I forget uh, exactly what the injury was, but he didn't make his debut um, until about a week and a half into the season or or so. Uh, he's starting to stretch out a little bit more in his in his first start. Just went three innings against Cincinnati, but gave up four runs. So and certainly a little rusty for him there. You got the Royals in his next start. He was pretty decent there, five and two thirds, six Ks, just two earned runs. Walking guys, though, four walks in his first outing against Cincinnati and three walks in that Royals outing. He then had a pretty rough matchup against Houston, but survived for five innings, struck out just two, which is kind of expected, and gave up about three runs. So that's a fine real-life outing uh, for DFS purposes, perhaps not so much. So um, in the early going, his price is 9300 He's down to 6600 now. This is a huge, huge price drop, and he gets a really good matchup. So uh, naturally, we're seeing a, a big projection on him because of the matchup, and the ownership is is kind of falling in line with that as well. The price has um, probably gotten a little carried away to the downside here. So um, that's kind of the overview. Let's uh, let's just get into the games real quick. We'll try and keep it um, try and keep it quick as we do have the main slate to go over as well. So uh, starting off here, we've got Miami and Atlanta, perhaps a little bit of weather concern here um, in the early going. But it it appears at least that we uh, will probably have um, a, a decent window to get in a full nine here um, down in Atlanta. We're, we're getting into that season where there's pretty much, there's pop-ups pretty much every day. Um, outside of Atlanta, and we just got to deal with it. Um, this is one of the stadiums they should probably could consider putting a roof on if uh, if that were financially feasible. In any case, Braxton Garrett on the mound for the Marlins. Um, he's pretty attackable with righties here, and we like the Atlanta righties, of course, right? Uh, Acuna finally seeing his price really popped to the top of the price range. He's at 6700 today. This may be the most expensive we've ever seen a hitter on DK, uh, at least that I can remember. And it's absolutely warranted, man. Like, guy gets on, and, and he steals bases, and he's got pop, um, and he just doesn't, he just doesn't quit, man. It, it's absolutely warranted uh, that he is this expensive. Can you make that happen with like a Shohei on the mound or something? I don't know. It's going to be really tough. Like I mentioned, getting to a full stack of the Braves here, it certainly isn't cheap. 67 for him, 50, excuse me, 6,000 for Matt Olson in a pretty bad matchup. Um, probably going to want to stay off of that outside of full Atlanta stacks that if you can get to them. Austin Riley, really good spot for him today, 5,600. Sean Murphy, pretty good spot for him as well, 52. For him behind the plate, 48 for Albies. The guys down at the bottom of the lineup, they can make full stacks cheaper for you. But, um, you know, if you want to play those top four and five guys, it, it's it's going to be very difficult. You're going to have to probably double punt on the mound, which I think you might be able to do. Uh, we'll get to a, a couple of options uh, a little bit later. Braxton Garrett does have really good numbers against the left side, so I would consider in a lot of scenarios leaving off a Matt Olson. He's still got a high strikeout rate against left-handers. Um, even though he, he certainly got plenty of power, 6,000 is, is no joke here, and it's not a good batted ball matchup for him from the left side of the plate. Garrett inducing a, a good bit of soft contact, has some whiff stuff really to both sides, about average to the righties. He'll, he'll give up a little bit more power there with some hard contact, 34% to the right side. So we mostly just want to get to the righties here from Atlanta um, and probably stay away from the lefties. 6-0 ground ball to fly ball to the left side of the plate in 112 hitters. I mean, that, that's a ridiculous number. Um, so probably staying off of any of the, the pure lefties like a uh, like an Eddie Rosario. He might get a day off today. Starting to see the baseball well is Eddie. He's been cheap um, and starting to heat up a little bit, I think. But uh, might not be the best spot to be targeting him at a cheap price today. So uh, 
likely to see a Kevin Pillar, Marcelo Zuna in the list or something like that. And the other lefties, Sam Hilliard and Eddie getting a day off. Um, 6,700, because the, the Braves are going to platoon so hard against him here, uh, probably not a, a favorite target of mine. Um, I, I think the, the price tag is intriguing, and there are definitely matchups where we're going to go after Braxton um, and target him on the mound this season. But the, the four-seamer, he needs a, a little bit more there, uh, a little bit more consistency, a little bit more value at just 91, 93 to really start neutralizing the power to the right side here. Uh, he's getting on the barrel a little bit too much to the righties. In aggregate, the numbers are fine because he's so elite against lefties. 060 ISO, 26% K rate, and as I mentioned, the 60 ground ball to fly ball. So, um, good bit of soft contact, pushing 18% to both sides. So, that could help him survive here a little bit if he's on the positive side of the slider and the curveball variants. Um, Changeup is actually okay given the extreme negative value on the four seamer but it's the sinker that's really keeping him alive and keeping him down in the strike zone so he doesn't give up a lot of homers and he doesn't get beat up all that often doesn't walk people so he's a serviceable arm but probably not the the best matchup for him today against a very righty heavy lineup in atlanta um kyle Wright on the mound as we alluded to we're gonna see a heavy ownership on him and we probably should marlins are have not been good uh to say the least this season and against right-handers 25% K rate 84 WRC plus 150 ISO give or take with a 293 Woba 7.5% walk rate a lot of ground balls here buck 50 ground ball to fly ball um, very attackable really top to bottom they did get Luis Arise back yesterday and that is the the one weakness uh, one real weakness that we can attack here uh, with Kyle Wright, he will give up a little bit of power to the left side. 170 ISO, 24% K rate is there, but Arise is not going to strike out at all. Jazzy will, but last couple of days he's gotten into balls, and he hits right-handed pitching, doesn't, really doesn't matter who it is, uh, exceptionally well. A lot of hard contact to the lefties, 34 and 35% there, 1.4 homers per nine. So we're starting to get into a range with Kyle Wright against the left side, that we need to be aware of um, with some of these power bats, like a, like a Jazzy uh, on the other side. Outside of he and Arise, uh, they're the only two lefties that really can get to him here. Um, the righties, he's elite against. The numbers are fantastic. 236 average, 270 Woba with an 067 ISO. Now, the, the strikeouts drop off the table a little bit, which is kind of surprising because he's got a good curveball, decent slider, to the right side, but that's really because of the four-seamer. Um, he needs to probably mix in a cutter and come off of the four-seamer here because the four-seamer is just straight right down the middle, and that's really leading to a lot of the, uh, the well, the lack of swing and miss to the righties. But in aggregate, 23% K rate is fine. 7.5% walk rate, also a fine number, 64% strike one rate. So he's still getting ahead of hitters, and he's staying off the barrel. So he's a very serviceable arm down here, and he's underpriced uh, for the raw upside that he provides, even though he has not been good in his first couple of starts. Still getting warmed up a little bit. Probably see a good five out of him today, and he's got upside for six, six and two-thirds, something like that. So uh, strong CSW number here, and that's really what we like to see out of a guy that's 6,600. So uh, a very viable target in both cash and tournaments here for Kyle Wright on the mound. Like the Braves a good bit, probably staying off of most of the Marlins outside of some Jazzy and Arise pieces and very little Braxton Garrett, probably none because Atlanta's going to platoon so heavily. Okay, let's get to Julio Urias on the mound for the Dodgers. Man, they need somebody to start throwing strikes and quit giving up runs in bunches. Like the Dodgers have been awful their entire pitching staff is just getting totally picked apart. Uh, it's mainly their bullpen, but, man, their starting rotation has not been good. They are hurting for for arms, um, and they're dealing with a lot of injuries on the offensive side, too. So they got bludgeoned by the, the Pirates yesterday, gave a nine spot or something like that. So um, Dodgers are really struggling here out of the gate, and they better get it figured out pretty quick because, you know, while – 
everybody in the NL West is is still pretty attackable. Padres underperforming yet. Also, um, you know, this is getting kind of worrisome for the Dodgers. So they need Urias to uh, really get it figured out himself. He's been he's been fine, right? He's he's a perfectly like as of now, like he's leading the rotation. Um, out you know, he and Kershaw really keeping everything kind of alive, but he got beat up pretty good in his last start against the Cubs. Gave up five earned and just three and a third. A few starts before that, of course, were really all good. Um, second time in a row he'd been seeing the Cubs, though, so they uh, naturally kind of, you know, they were seeing him a little bit better, and and they got to him a little bit. But his first three starts, Arizona, Colorado, and San Francisco, all pretty weak lineups overall, perhaps the strongest lineup over there, maybe Arizona, to be honest. Uh, six innings, six innings, six innings in each three, uh, each of those three, six Ks, six Ks, and eight Ks. So the K stuff is still there, and against the Cubs in his last two outings, six Ks, four Ks. So dropping off a little bit there, but once again, um, back-to-back starts against the Cubs. So he's been fine, and he'll be fine. There's really no serious issue with Urias. Uh, but I did mention that he gives up some power to the left side of the plate. And this has really been the problem for him, uh, pretty much his biggest weakness for the last couple of seasons. It's not average to either side necessarily, but it is power uh, to lefties. And that's mostly coming on his four-seamer to the left side. It's pretty straight, and he throws it right down the middle. And that can get him into a little bit of trouble. Um, now, with Pittsburgh... Really, their best left-handed hitter is Brian Reynolds, but he's, of course, going to hit from the right side here. So um, they they will have, like, a Jack Sawinski that'll hit from the left side. but And he, he definitely has some pop, but for the most part, they're probably going to platoon here against him with all of their their switch hitters, Carlos Santana, Rodi Castro, etc. Um, I believe they did just get Austin Hedges back, another right-handed bat behind the plate. Uh, Mark Mathias, he's been fine. Connor Joe's been great. McCutcheon, of course. Um, so they're going to platoon pretty hard, I think, against uh, Urias today. And that's actually the, the plus side of his split. So we'll see what they want to do. Pirates generally try to play some matchups. Uh, so they may throw in a Zawinski or something like that to give them a little bit of balance. But uh, 10000 the price tag looks fine here in this particular matchup. The... Pirates against lefties, however, in the early going this season, they've been really, really strong. 124 WRC plus and 255 PAs, 11.5% walk rate. That's a huge number with a 21% strikeout rate, give or take. 160 ISO and a 360 WOBA. These are really good numbers. The one that's really going to jump out at us, though, however, is a 2.2 to to 1 ground ball to fly ball. That is out of control, huge. Um... Neutral ground ball to fly ball is Urias to the right side, so that does favor, I'm not sure it favors really either side, but uh, it does play into the Pirates' platoon batted ball profile a little bit more. Um, You'd like to see Urias with a huge ground ball rate, particularly against righties, up near 1.5 to 1 or so, and that would make this a really bad batted ball matchup because they're going to platoon. But... Since he's down near a uh, neutral or so, it's it's okay, um, but it's still a pretty a pretty dangerous spot just because of how good the the Pirates have been so far. So um, that doesn't really take me off of Urias necessarily. High medium projection so far and commensurately high ownership at about thirty percent and eleven hundred off of Otani up top. So this is that might inflate his ownership a little bit. Not necessarily in a bad way, but um, really the only weakness here is is to the left side. 1.9 homers per nine. It's not walks. It's not barrels. It's not really hard contact necessarily. It's just some power. Um, so he can get picked apart for a couple of runs here. Wouldn't be all that surprising. Uh, but it's still undoubtedly a, a pretty damn good spot for Urias still. So you can get to him. I think 30 is probably in the range uh, that that makes you know a, a good bit of sense to me here. Um, 50% of urea seems a little bit high. 15, 20% seems a little low. So somewhere right in the middle seems fine. Uh, Mitch Keller on the other side, 9,200. I don't think we can do this at this price tag. 
Um, he's been very serviceable, and I, I think Keller, at very low ownership, he pretty much never gets played. Um, a lot of the time has some value in, in tournaments, and there's some variance with him because of the pretty medial strikeout rate here at about 21%. Pretty low strike one rate, still has issues getting ahead in counts. Those sort of early career problems with the walks creep up on him on occasion still. But he's really figured it out over the last couple of seasons. Calmed the walks down. And, I mean, early in his career, his his walk rate was 13 14% or something. It was just out of control. Uh, so it's much better over the last several seasons. In his first four starts this year, five starts even, um, kind of up and down. Really good start against Boston. Seven innings got them for seven Ks. He was down at 6,500, though. Uh, in, in that start, and he'd been at 67, 65, 65, 7, and 86, seeing the price start to creep up now, and now he gets a, a pretty bad batted ball matchup against the Dodgers offense, and despite the fact that the Dodgers pitching staff really struggling, their offense has mostly been uh, pretty okay. We'll see, I, I believe uh, Max Muncy is still on the paternity list. Um, speaking of paternity list, I think yesterday I said that uh, Brian Reynolds was also on the paternity list he may have been but um could have been the bereavement list or i'm not sure I, i've seen conflicting reports so uh i haven't really dug too deep into that in any case muncie is on the paternity list uh i think he will be out for this game as well but we'll have to keep an eye on that um they really need him back in the middle of this lineup he was seeing the baseball great here in the early going hopefully he can come and, and capitalize on that daddy power um and keep the Dodgers' offense rolling because they're struggling overall pretty in, in a pretty bad way uh, on the mound here. But uh, Keller at 92, I don't think we can go after this. I think the price is just too high given the the Dodgers' offense here is still very disciplined. Walking at a full 12% clip, 24% K rate, yeah, they're going to strike out. But, I mean, 21% K is in the tank for Keller. It's not all that attractive. 121 WRC plus, a lot of hard contact still, getting on base, hitting for a lot of power. So uh, similar to now, Rowenzi pieced them apart pretty good yesterday. He was he was awesome, and I'm not sure that Keller's really got that same sort of upside. He he's got suppression upside in him, but at 9200, this is going to make him really difficult to play. Uh, certainly when you've got both Urias and Otani on the mound. So uh, mostly just prefer the Dodgers here. You can get to some some Pirates pieces. Uh, they're one of the cheaper stacks that are going to allow you to get to an Otani or something. Um, but I generally don't like going after Urias. He's a really good arm over here, and they're going to platoon heavily, and that's really the plus side of a split. Okay, uh, Seattle and Philly. Um, saw some runs, some sneaky runs in this game yesterday, and we kind of talked about that, that you could really play kind of all sides of that game. There's susceptibility for the arms on the mound. Um you know, it, it didn't go like super crazy, but some guys got into some balls. And it's kind of what we might see again here today. George Kirby's got some real power issues and hard contact issues to the right side of the plate. They hit for a lot of average due to the righties against Kirby here. 319 average over 68 innings. I mean, this is a pretty big sample. 150 ISO is a respectable number, but a lot of contact here, just a 21% K rate. Buck 30 ground ball to five ball is fine. 34% hard contact is, is kind of where he's getting into trouble a little bit, and that's the lack of a good secondary arsenal here. No slider, no curveball really to speak of, and the changeup is actually, given the extreme negative value for it, um, really not seeing terribly outsized negative results to the left side of the plate. So um, he's still serviceable because he's got, Decent swing and miss stuff to the lefties, but he's given up a, a good bit of power and one of the higher numbers split adjusted on the day to the right side. Uh, let's see if I can. It's not quite the highest. Um, I, actually, it is the highest Woba to right handers uh, on the day here at uh, 357. Don't have the, that in the sheet here. Or I do right here. Uh, 357 Woba, like that's a pretty big number. It's not because of walks, right? It's just so much average that they're hitting for. Um, so we can get to some Phillies here with some righties and definitely some lefties as well 
because of the lack of a really good changeup. No real value here. And despite a, a large sample, um, it's soft contact that he's inducing that's keeping him really out of trouble here with the lefties. But good four-seamer, good sinker, but really bad secondary arsenal here. And I think we could probably get to some Phillies again. Um, now, they're also pretty expensive still. Bryson Stott at 4000 He's not leading off. That's that's fine. Trey at 62 not cheap. Schwarber, 55 That's a playable price tag, definitely. Nick Castellanos, 47 kind of getting up there as well. But he's been 5K recently and seeing the baseball pretty well. One of the guys that got into Logan Gilbert yesterday. Brandon Marsh um, also hit a couple of balls really hard yesterday. Smoked a ball right back up the middle and, and Gilbert kind of luck boxed his way into a, kind of a circus catch. So he's still seeing the baseball as well. 4600 more playable price tag for him. JTR at 5000 Got to pay for that. But you pretty much always do. So cheaper guys down at the bottom of the lineup if you want to get to a sneaky philly stack here and target some kirby get leverage on about 18 20 percent of the field i think that's fine um i'm really kind of worried that despite some attractive strikeout stuff to the left side phillies are very balanced and i'm i'm worried about going after heavy ownerships on kirby in in builds of my own uh, kind of a medial median projection so far here at about 14 and a half give or take and I think we need a little bit more out of a, a projection and a little bit less in the ownership to be quite honest um, at a, an $8,100 price tag so this is a tough spot for him I think we might be able to see a little bit of Philly's offense here on the other side uh, but he's still a respectable arm and he doesn't walk people he's not going to beat himself but he does pitch to a full 81 82 percent contact rate and that's because mostly to the right side. So you can get to him with good lefty hitters over here, like a Schwarber, like a Brandon Marsh. By Bryson Stott up, up at the top as well. Um, and, of course, you know, a, a Trey Castellanos JTR. Very difficult lineup to get through uh, without kind of outsized stuff to both sides of the plate. Not sure Kirby really has it just yet. Strom on the other side, I kind of like this as a, as a tournament play here. Um, might be able to even get to him into some cash. I don't know. 7200 it's a nice price tag. And in his last outing, I think it was his last outing, he took apart the Rockies. He did. Five and a third and 11 Ks. Now, we're not sure if the strikeout stuff is really this strong for Strom yet. Um, most of last season came out of the bullpen, but he's been in the rotation here. And they've been stretching him out to be a, a starter while they still have Ranger Suarez and and a couple guys uh, on the shelf. And in his, I guess, four full starts after the first appearance this year when he just went an inning, four innings, five innings, two and two-thirds when he got uh, hit around a little bit. May have had some weather in that game against Cincinnati. Um, still struck out six, so that's fine. And five and a third in his last against Colorado with the 11 K's. So um, control has been fine. And that was really coming out of the bullpen, at least a little bit of a, a concern throwing strike one, getting ahead of hitters and putting himself in really equitable counts. But so far the arsenal, at least in, in this aggregate sample here, 62 and two thirds looks pretty solid. I would say a good four seamer plus sinker, not using the cutter a whole lot, but uh, on the plus side of the value as well. Good, good slider over here and kind of a wipeout slider to lefties, but got real good swing and miss when he'll backdoor it a little bit to the righties as well. Good curveball. So with the plus value on the slider and the curveball, doesn't necessarily need a super equitable changeup. Could really offer a lot of value, of course. If he could develop this pitch and, and bring down the value here, um, this is a super noisy number, so th this value at least. Uh, if he could bring bring up the value, I suppose, in, in the changeup, um, that would make him even more deadly than I, I think he can be. The, the stuff is, is strong. He's hard to pick up out of the hand, and the K stuff we can't really deny here. At 7,200, 20% ownership, we're starting to see a... A lot of ownership come to come to Strom, and it's because of the six, six, and eleven Ks in his last three starts. Now, pretty good matchups there: Miami, Cincinnati, and Colorado. 
Um, Seattle, the lineup should be much better. But here in the early going, they really haven't been. 86 WRC+, plus, 27% K rate to the left side, or two lefties, rather. 225 PA, starting to converge a little bit north of 200 plate appearances. 176 ISO, still going to hit for some power, of course. Uh, but there's a lot of swing and miss here, and sub-300 WOBA down here at 286, kind of concerning so far that they haven't been able to put it together. Now, I mentioned yesterday that um, Seattle, when they break out, they're going to start to break out really hard. Now, could that be today? Yeah, of course. Um, if the strikeout stuff for Matt Strom isn't a full K or, or 1.2 Ks an inning, then you could see that regress quite precipitously. And Seattle could definitely get after him. But he's got five pitches here that are very workable and that he's still using uh, to a pretty good and healthy amount here, even the cutter just at 5% of the arsenal. So um, that's going to make him, even if he doesn't have any one of his pitches, he's probably going to have to not have a full two or even three of them to get totally blown apart uh, in a lot of scenarios. Now, yeah, he could, whatever, walk a guy, give up a little you know, soft contact sort of base hit, and then give up a three-run bomb uh, in the first inning, and then you're kind of uh, shit out of luck. But um, I think this is an attractive spot for Strom here to go after – uh, some of the Mariners in, in a pretty weak offense so far. They've been pretty pretty much underperforming. Now, they did start to see the baseball a little bit yesterday uh, against Taiwan Walker. So that could be enough to get them going. Price-wise, though, I'm not super stoked about going after him. you got to pay for Julio, 61. You can always play him. That, that's perfectly fine. But Ty France still at 4,800. Really hasn't been all that excellent this season. Uh, Gino striking out a lot. Really good numbers against lefties. Um historically, but he's struggling out of the gate as well. 43 for him, that's a fine and playable price tag. So if you want to get to some Seattle stacks, it's okay. you still got to pay for Tay Oscar, though, at 51. Um, he's one of the few power bats that has kind of shown up here in the early going outside of Jared Kelnick, who's really been their best consistent and best and most consistent hitter. They'll platoon against Strom here, but he's got really good numbers to both sides of the plate. Nothing terribly worrisome in terms of contact uh, or power allowed or hard contact, really. So uh, I, I'd side with Strom and the Phillies here rather than the Mariners. Uh, you could play some Mariners, so I think I'd go um, Strom and the Phillies, then probably the Mariners, then probably Kirby. Uh, really not s super excited for this um this matchup for Kirby. Okay, San Diego and the Cubs. Seth Lugo on the mound. This is a weird game last night. Nobody really did anything. Um, pitchers gave up a couple of runs on both sides. Hitters didn't really do much. Um, interesting game. I know we kind of talked about that a little bit. That was probably mostly due to the weather. It was pretty cold in Chicago. Well, it's 60 degrees here today, so uh, might see that offense start to show up a little bit with some attackable arms on the mound. Seth Lugo, um, he's been fine. And at 8,300 here, I think this is you know similar to Waka yesterday. It's just kind of, well, who else are we going to play in the mid-range? We do have Matt Strom, of course, that we just talked about. Um, two good starts against Colorado and Atlanta to start the year. Then he got picked apart a little bit in three and two-thirds by Milwaukee. Bounced back pretty strongly against Arizona in his last start. Went six innings, got them for six Ks, just gave up two. So... Um, Lugo's been fine, and, and the stuff looks fine so far. Suppression metrics are mostly okay. A little bit of a, a vulnerability to the right side of the plate in terms of average, allowing a full 275 there. It's a pretty big number. 325 Woba, but not a lot of power so far, so just 132, 132 ISO. 22% K rate, tick below average, nothing super worrisome. Hard contact numbers, a lot of soft contact to the right right side, which is really neutralizing a lot of the power. Hard contact is, you know, 28%. It's fine. Um, now, in the opposite end of the platoon, the numbers are actually quite a bit better, to be honest. 196 average. I mean, 100 points, is, or 80 points, I guess, in this case, is, is 80 points. That's, that's a lot. Uh, 251 Woba with a buck 15 ISO and a 29% K rate. 
Decent breaking stuff here, curveball slider. Not throwing a changeup a whole hell of a lot. Really, his vulnerability is throwing the sinker. And if he starts floating the sinker, some of the lefties could probably get to him here. But he's got the curveball and the slider to bail him out a little bit. And a pretty damn good four-seamer still as well. Um, so if he's not feeling the two-seamer, he can just migrate right over to the four-seamer and start snapping off the curveball and the slider. And he should be fine. Control is good. Strike one rate is good. CSW is good. Everything's fine for Lugo. I think this is an all right spot. Uh, I do like the Cubs offense in general, though. Here, early going, 630 PAs. I mean, we're one month into the season now. Um, 116 WRC plus and a 19% strikeout rate. This is a very strong number. Not a whole lot of power. Just a 161, kind of an average ISO, but 344 Woba. We talked about this a little bit yesterday against Waka. Uh, I think Seth Lugo is a markedly has a markedly better arsenal. Doesn't give up near as much hard contact or power as, than you know compared to Waka at least. So I think uh, from a batted ball perspective, much more difficult matchup today for the Cubs. Um, you can still play some of them, Nico. Got a, ooh, geez, $500 price bump today. That's not great. Dansby got a $600 price drop, so that is great. Um, Ian Happ still expensive, 49 Say a Suzuki at 49 as well. Um, Hosmer down there, he's been in the middle of the lineup. He's been very cheap all season. 2200 you can get to him. Patty Wisdom, 46 still not wild about that price tag down in the six hole. Um, so I'm not super crazy about... About the Cubs here, we'll have to keep an eye on Cody Bellinger. Um, not seeing him in, in projected lineups right now. And not totally sure if he is dealing with an injury or anything. Um, I'm not showing anything, so it looks like he should probably be fine. We'll uh, just have to keep an eye on that because that could be... Oh, look at that. He is on the paternity list, as a matter of fact. So uh, congratulations to him. So he'll be out... Um, at least until tomorrow. So, uh, he w he'll, you know, not be in the list. So that uh, takes one of their really hot bats over here, um, out of the lineup. And and given the pricing, I think I'd rather side with Lugo, in a lot of scenarios. Seeing about 18, 20 percent on him as well. Lowish projection here. Um, seems a tick low for the this particular matchup, but uh, once again, it is 60 degrees now in Chicago. Uh, much better baseball weather today than last night. On the other side, Hayden Wisniewski on the mound. 5300 This is kind of an attractive price tag, to be quite honest. Um, kind of a bad matchup, however, to be quite honest as well. Now, I, I do like Wes. Um, I've got, I think he's got a lot of high upside. We played him in his Oakland start. We did not play him in his his Dodgers start. Um, kind of expecting that he would regress quite hard after that seven inning, seven K outing against Oakland. And sure enough, in, at least in the strikeout department, regressed quite a bit. Four to third, just one K against the Dodgers, gave up three runs. So uh, that tanks the DFS production pretty easily uh, when there's no strikeouts and you're giving up a couple of runs. Difficult matchup here once again, even though the Padres have been very disappointing offensively in aggregate this season. Still a 12% walk rate, 26% K rate. So there's the swing and miss. Um, their, their key bats in the middle, of the, at, really at the top of the lineup, outside of, I mean, Tatis has been fine since he came back, but Machado and Soto have not been good really at all for going on, well, I guess the entire season. Bogarts has been, Cronenworth's been fine, um, Carp showing pop, and outside of that, not all that impressive for the Padres over here. So uh, I think Wesneski has some upside certainly at the price. Um, I'm not super jacked about going after these really good hitters, historical hitters at least, Tatis, Soto, Machado, Bogarts, Cronenworth, uh, and, and Carp's had a pretty good start to the year. They've got a decent platoon going on over there with he and Nelly Cruz. Um, Overall, pretty marginal in the arsenal so far. Uh, Four-seamer seeing some variance with it. Sinker also seeing some variance with it. Basically break-even pitches there. Bad change because the four-seamer and the sinker aren't all that great. Good slider, good cutter. So that's going to keep him sort of on the on the plus side of, of neutralizing a hell of a lot of power. But we're seeing it start to creep up a little bit with the lack of 
a really good change up here against the left side of the plate. 175 ISO, 257 average, starting to increase a little as the sample gets a little larger. 19.5% K rate to the left side. North of 30% in the hard contact and under 14% in the soft contact to the lefties. Uh, starting to see some some vulnerabilities creep up, up to the surface here. And I think that's attackable with some of the Padres. If you want to play a 5,000 Soto, yeah, go ahead. Like, he's he's hitting well south of, of the Mendoza line, but uh, still Juan Soto, still very patient at the plate, still walks a lot. And really his, his only problem is has kind of been strikeouts so far. Um, but he'll get it going. We're not terribly worried about Soto, even though we're going on a full season's worth here of uh, pretty subpar results. For for West though at, at 5300 there's upside at this price he can suppress for you know five six innings here and against a pretty overall cold lineup I think this is a reasonable punt to take in some tournaments of very low ownership now naturally we're going to see a, a low median projection pretty much for everybody when they target this lineup um, and in aggregate the strikeout stuff leaves quite a bit on the table for West but. The suppression metrics in the early going here are fine. We probably need to see him develop the arsenal a little bit more and, and develop some more consistency out of the fastball mix, certainly, to get really excited. But I do like the price tag here. Uh, in the early going, he was 69, 78, 63, and 6,300 in his last several starts. So now we're getting a full $1,000 price drop on him. Uh, it's kind of attractive. Um so I do like the Padres a little bit. Probably going to see some ownership on them today. But I think you could take some tournament punts. This is one of the cheap pieces down here with the Kyle Wright that will allow you to get to a more expensive stack and an Otani or a Urias on the mound. So I think this is a fine construction. I think I've talked myself mostly into pitching here with Lugo and Wisniewski. Uh, but you could definitely play the Padres and if you want to play some of the Cubs, not super crazy about it at their prices, but don't think it's bad at all. Okay, St. Louis and San Francisco, day game in San Francisco. Uh, we, we like this, especially when it's 70 degrees. Baseball flies out here. So I think this is an interesting tournament game because you're probably unlikely to see a hell of a lot of ownership. Definitely not from the Cardinals because they get Logan Webb on the other side. A lot of ownership coming to him. We'll get to that in a sec. 5600 for Michaelis. Um, oh yeah, yeah, another attractive price tag down here. But in aggregate, the whiff stuff it just isn't there. Now, he has suppression, and uh, if he's on the plus side of the variance here with his basically break-even pitches, you know, fastball mix is okay, four-seamer sinker. He can be getting some ground balls, and if he's on the plus side of the slider doesn't have to deal with cold wind at, in San Francisco at night or anything. You know, it's a good day for baseball out in San Fran. So might be able to see him snap off some some good variants on the slider here. Same with the curveball. Um, those are really his four main pitches. Does throw the change up just cause it kind of as a show-me change. Um, probably shouldn't show it to anybody because it's not, a very, <laughs> not very equitable. But uh, attackable... In terms of raw contact rate, he has an 83% contact rate. It's a big number. Now, he doesn't walk people, and he doesn't put a lot of guys on base for free here. But pitches to a lot of contact. 260 average to righties is kind of elevated. 151 ISO there, 170 ISO to the left side, even though they hit for about uh, four points lower average. So um, nothing terribly worrisome for Michaelis. It's just that he pitches to so much contact, and we're worried about strikeout upside. But some of that is certainly priced in here at, at 5,600. In the early going against right-handers here, 600 PAs almost. 10% walk rate for the Giants. Patient, but also not so patient because they strike out at a 26% clip. A lot of uh, three true outcome type of hitters over here with walks, strikeouts, and power, full 214 ISO. So they're going to hit the ball in the air and over the wall. And that's an attractive stack in a day game in San Francisco. And we're seeing a slightly elevated run total for the Giants here so far. Um, Lamont Wade, uh, he'll probably be in, the, he'll definitely be in the lineup today. He's 2,800, probably be leading off. That's an attractive piece. Yaz got scratched last night, so we'll have to keep an eye on him. Uh, but Jock at, down at 4,500, very playable there. 
Um, Michael Conforto, 4,100, also very playable there if you want to attack with some lefties. But you can get to him with the righties, as I mentioned, and the 260 average, 150 ISO there. Play some J.D. Davis at third base there in, in the middle of the lineup. Play some Mitch Hanniger in the outfield, 4,000 flat for him. Uh, Blake Sable probably get another start behind the plate as Joey Bart is dealing with a bit of a groin issue, I believe. Um, so we'll see. It is a day game after a night game, so I'm not sure what they're going to do. But uh, keep an eye on, on Giants lists because I think this is an attractive tournament stack. They're cheap enough to allow you to get to some more expensive arms on the mound. Logan Webb, you could correlate with the Giants if you'd like. 8,600 for him, 25% ownership, seems fine. A lot of ground balls from Logan, two and a half ground ball to fly ball on aggregate. Super high to the left side at 2.7, less so, but no real, uh, not like a worrisome number to the righties. It's still well over two. Um, really no hard contact, not a lot of soft contact coming to the lefties at just 12%, but not super worrisome. Um, because as we mentioned before, hard contact when they're all on the ground, you're not super worried about. So it doesn't really translate into power allowed. 269 average is kind of a elevated number for sure. But just a 148 ISO to the left side. 20% strikeout rate, so the swing and miss does leave a little bit on the table for him. And that's really all we've been concerned with with Logan in, in tournaments, at least, is, is raw strikeout upside. But uh, this is a good arm. And if he's got the ground balls rolling, change up slider sinker combination, Really good ground ball arsenal here, and if he's got that rolling, uh, he can suppress. He could go seven, even eight innings uh, a lot of the time. Today, it's still a difficult matchup. Cardinals, 21% K rate, 10% walk rate, 106 WRC plus and a 150 ISO. 35% hard contact. Not super worried about that number in this matchup necessarily. A lot of ground balls from them as well, 132 ground ball to fly ball. So uh, I think it's a fine matchup for Logan fundamentally. Price is okay, and the ownership is uh, it's elevated, but it, it seems fine if you want to go with like a double mid-range type of build uh, on the mound. I think that's a, a fine approach. Medium projection, north of 16 so far, seems okay. And if we want to get to some Logan Webb and some Giants teams, I think that's a fine play. Uh, have to keep an eye on the ownership. If this steam's north of 30 or something, might we might be getting into aggressive territory. But at a uh, quarter of your teams here, I think this is probably a fine number. The Cardinals might not swing and miss a whole hell of a lot, though. So we would be worried about upside in that in that scenario. Uh, okay, last game of the early slate. Let's get to it quickly. Otani on the mound. We're not playing Oakland. I mean, we're just not dealing with it. This is the last game of their series here. And... I'm not going after Otani. Um, sometimes he can spray it, and sometimes he gets picked apart a little bit if he just doesn't have the splitter, doesn't have the slider going. But uh, I don't really care. Guy throws freaking 100 miles an hour, and he's probably going to hit two bombs today, even off a of lefty JP here. We're just not not dealing with the athletics here. Now, if you want to, as as ownership on Otani will steam this 30% number. I mean, I, if it stays here. Uh, I think this is a smash play. Um, I really doubt it will. So keep an eye out for that. But um, we're not, we're just not going to deal with any of the Oakland guys. Um, Asturi Ruiz does hit. I mean, he's been fine at the top of the lineup. Stole three ba bases in the first, like, two innings last night. Um, so he'll move if he can get on base. Problem is getting on base against Otani here. Uh, some of the lefties, really the the best price adjusted play I think is going to be Jace Peterson his righties very well he's 2600 so if you want to take a hedge piece off of some of your Otani ownership I think that's fine um Ryan Nota he's been striking out a crap load plate discipline's been terrible so far um 2400 he'll be in the two most likely but I mean no thank you uh certainly siding with Otani here in probably nine of ten scenarios Nine and a half of ten, maybe. Uh, Eleven one on the mound is no joke. Like you got to pay for it. So uh, if you want to play the Angels against JP Sears on the other side, uh, they're going to be chalky once again. Probably should be. JP Sears just doesn't have the the raw whiff stuff to get through the Angels here. Gives up a lot of power to the righties. Two hundred ISO with a twenty one percent K rate, thirty five percent hard contact, and a one point seven homers per nine. Soft contact under sixteen percent. It's not a horribly worrisome number, but it's certainly not the 18% that he's inducing to lefties. So 
Um, better against lefties. Good thing you can't play Otani on the mound today, or in the batter's box, rather, because you probably at 6,500 or wherever you would be, uh, that could be a, a fade target for you and a way to differentiate some of your Angels teams, but can't do that today. So they're probably going to... Um, they're, they're going to play another eight righties against J.P. Sears over here, and that is not a good spot. So it's a, a warranted ownership um, spike for the Angels. I mean, they were very popular last night and got there. But they're going to be very popular once again today. Taylor Ward, 4,600, like this price for sure, leading off today. He'll be pretty popular, of course, as will Trout, 63. Anthony Rendon's price hasn't moved, 4,200. Not hitting for a lot of power is Rendon, so that's kind of frustrating. But I think when he gets going and gets more ABs under his belt, having been hurt really for the entire last two seasons, um, he'll start to to heat up as well. Hunter Renfro, Renfro uh, hit an absolute bomb yesterday. 5,200, still playable there. Brandon Drury's been good. 35, Renhifo, Chad Wallach behind the plate. He's got pop. 34, not wild about that price. But Zach Neto down at the bottom has been fine as well. So you can play literally every single one of these guys. So keep an eye out for the ownership updates because you're going to have to differentiate your Angels teams once again. And 75 degrees in L.A. too. So, um, yeah, give me all of the Angels. Don't really want anything to do with Oakland here. Uh, okay, so that should do it for the early slate. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think what I'll do is just cut this video here and... And we'll go over the main slate probably in a separate one just to make it easier for everybody. Um, let's go over stacks then real quick. Atlanta, I like against Braxton Garrett. This is a good spot for the righties against him. Um, Dodgers against Mitch Keller. Yeah, sure, you can get there. I like shorting expensive price tags uh, on pitchers that probably shouldn't be that expensive. And Mitch Keller definitely qualifies at 9,200 today. You can get to the Dodgers. Their offense is still fine, uh, even though their pitching staff has been terrible. Give me some Urias, though. Uh, I think this is a, a good plus matchup for him, even though Pittsburgh's going to platoon quite a bit. And they've been good against lefties. Seattle and Philly, sneaky offense here. Not so much from Seattle necessarily, but perhaps a little bit. But give me some Strom in the Phillies. Uh, like Philly a, a decent bit here is maybe a little bit off the board. San Diego and Chicago, in in a warmer day, in a day game in Chicago, you can, you can always play offense. Uh, but I think I'm almost... Siding with the pitching here and Seth Lugo targeting a, a, an expensive Chicago C Cubs list over here. And Wisniewski at a very inexpensive 5,300 against uh, what's been a what's a potent lineup or what should be a potent lineup. Um, they've been pretty poor so far. St. Louis and San Francisco, give me the Giants and some Logan Webb teams. You can play the Cardinals, definitely. Um, as we saw last night, I mean, Goldschmidt, you know, matchups don't matter for, for guys like Goldschmidt, Arenado. And that kind of power, uh, Goldie had two balls out in the first two innings. So, like, whatever. Um, and it's a day game, and baseball flies when it's warm out in San Francisco. So, um, with the fences having been moved in over the last several years, they uh, you can see some runs scored here. This is an interesting tournament game to get to. And definitely just the Angels and Shohei Otani on the mound. So, um, hope that helps for the early slate, guys. Keep an eye out for the projection updates and the ownership updates as we push them to the site uh, over the next couple of hours. Good luck.